I'm focusing today on the full plasmacytic proliferations or neoplasms. This is what we see a lot at uh, the main campus. So it, it'll be a just case slide format, mm -hmm. uh, minimal text, just images of cases, pictorial images, um, showing the spectrum of uh, these lymphoplasmacytic uh, cell proliferations. Uh, trying to think, uh, just approaching it with differential diagnoses, workup, and then showing the ancillary data, immunohistochemistry, flow, and molecular integration, and then we'll have um, at the end questions, time for questions. So the first case is a 60-year-old female, and this was actually a small bowel resection that was received. So let's go, what, what do you guys see this left panel? So, I mean, it looks like, uh, you know, small flu cells is kind of tiny as far as the image goes, but it looks like there's uh, uh, follicles there. Yeah. Actually, maybe we should go to the gross first, right? That, that's it's, so we saw this, there is in the mucosa, this sort of fish fleshy white nodule on, on bisection, and then these were the, the histologic section. I think I had a little bowel mucosa, but it's cut off here. And then you see these sort of germinal centers. Uh, the mesentery or adipose tissue, you see this going into the fat. And, and then at higher power, what do you see? It's it's just, themselves. Yeah. That's your body's intranuclear inclusion, these sort of clumpy clockwise, clumpy chromatin and plasma cells. Some e rare eosinophil. It's the same here. Um, and areas you see sheets of more mature plasma cells. And here's so CD20, there's a lot of just like I said, expanded B cell nodules. But the BCL2, you see these sort of variable expansions. Some, most of these are negative and then positive in the sort of inter follicular areas, 79A, sort of diffusely positive. And what do we see here? A lot of striking Tapa restriction. Tapa restriction. And the MIB-1 in these reactive, germ there's high, so usually in reactive germinal centers you see high mm -hmm. polarized proliferation, but in the uh, interfollicular it's sort of low. So what are we thinking? Mild lymphoma. That's great, that's good. So extra nodal, right? Mild lymphoma, marginal zone. Um, and this is a, a sort of unusual for resection in the bowel, maybe cause obstruction. Um, on a daily basis, we get consulted a lot by GI, you know, small, tiny biopsies. Is this lymphoma, is this chronic gastritis? And usually it's associated with H. pylori. Um, occasionally, a rare occasion, it can transform. Recently, we saw a case where in the bone marrow, it was just very, very high grade. Uh, it almost looked like Burkitt, which is very unusual. Um, anything else you want to know? Talk about lymphomas, marginal zone I guess if this is more, I didn't do it like a, you know, <laughs> the WHO key, the mm. tables and all that, but. Is it responsive to treatment, like what kind of lymphoma? Sorry? Responsive to treatment, is it? So usually like in, if in the lung and, or it's resection, basically res resect. Um, in the stomach, they have to treat with um, antibiotics and then um, monitor, and then uh, if it's still resistant, sometimes they go for radiotherapy, um, and then sometimes they give Rituxan, the CD20 Rituxan. So it's indolent, so they don't give like a chop or chemotherapy, unless it's like some weird thing that's you know systemically all over the place, or it transforms. So are there any specific uh, cytogenetics or molecular that's associated with the ones that don't respond to antibiotics? Correct. So you have what, the 1118, the malt one fusion, uh, and rarely 1418, 
Um, there is also some like site specific, the, the translocations in the salivary gland, thyroid, mall is different from the stomach or lung. Long mall, you had 11, 10, ECL 10, I think, translocation. So this is an old data that came out like, from Germany. And, uh, so I can send maybe a reference to this of the infusion. Usually, I think by RT-PCR, it's hard because of the so many different fusions. Um, and then also organism-based, right? And you can have the, uh, so H. pylori in the stomach, uh, Borrelia in the skin, um, chlamydia tsetsia in the orbit, mold lymphoma, uh, and then yet yeah, th if you have the fusions or translocations, those are like, antibiotic resistant and then they go for like, radiotherapy or, or other types of therapy. Whereas the antibiotic ones, they just sort of melt. Um, the Okay, so the next case, let's say 79 year old, uh, comes in with a diagnosis, 70 year old, 79 year old male, comes in with a quote unquote diagnosis of myeloma. Oh, what do we see here? So this is a marrow. Anybody wanna? It is overpopulated with cells. Yeah, very blue, hypercellular for it. It's only, yeah, 20% of the cells, but it seems yeah. all over the place. And there, what what kind of cells are these? Uh, uh, lymphocytes. Yeah. yeah. More like lymphocytes. And over there is a plasma cell. Yeah. And then what's this? I tried to highlight. It's kind of dark. Uh, it has like metachromatic granules, sort of purplish granule, fried egg. Basophone. And yeah, mass. And it's some of these have sort of more like lymphoplasma cytoid, more abundant cytoplasm. So here we're trying to point out, yes, yeah, so you have a spectrum of like plasma cell, you know, eccentric nuclei, Golgi hub, much more mature small lymphocytes, mast cells, and in the biopsy they have these sort of pink granules plasma cells, and then all these are small lymphocytes or lymphoplasmacytoid cells. Um, and so the immuno, what does it show? A lot of B cells, huh? Right. CD20, 79A. So the scattered mast cells are 117 positive. So it's kind of new, if it's myeloma, the 138 is sort of sprinkly and patchy, mm -hmm. so does it fit for myeloma, do you think? No. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, it's something more B cell predominant over plasma cell. But yet there are plasma cells here. Um, so interestingly, this case did have uh, the MIDE 88 and CXCR4 mutations. So what does that mean? Apparently this is, well, it occurs more commonly in Waldenstrom's or lymphoplasmacytic cell, you know, lymphoma, Waldenstrom's. IgM. Yeah, IgM. And then there's some of these other mutations. However, not specific, it can occur in other low-grade beasts, so, so I'm going to show some other examples and data. Um, so here's another case recently, and even more striking. What do we? So 89 year old. So what do we think of the? Hypercell. And again, same thing. A lot of small. Mast cells. Yeah, and this one had a lot more than the other. The, this other case, but yeah, a lot of these sort of mass cells all over, and then you can see it on the yes. by all these guys. And then plasma cells, yes. plasma cells. So now, what do you think? It's the same thing like the last case. Seems like it. That's what I, yeah, that's what I thought. So here's again that 138, and and, and again it came in with the clinical di 
diagnosis of myeloma, but again, the 138 is not usually where you see sheets if it's myeloma, plasmosome, neoplasm, but again, it's a mix of a lot of small lymphs and then mast cells and plasma cells. But then I got the immunos back, and what does this show you? So what do we have? Yes, it's marking more like a CLL, 523. So usually LPLs are 5 negative, 10 negative, like mild lymphoma, C5 negative, C10. But in this case, surprisingly, although the morphology suggests LPL, the immuno comes back suggesting more like CLL, SLL. I was surprised. I thought, oh, this is a nice case of LPL. I put down, please, you know, do my I have a question. Yeah? Would a couple of them help here to differentiate in CLO water uh, from LPL? I think by immuno LPLs and CLOs, the IHC is not as helpful like in myeloma, maybe by flow. Uh, I think in this case we only got the biopsy, we didn't have flow data. But yeah, light chain restrictions can sometimes help. So I thought this was more like a SLL, CLL with lymphoplasmacytic cell differentiation. And then question, yeah, should we do my um, But this, we don't, we don't have data. But it's definitely not a myeloma. Because it came in, came in through the myeloma clinic from a myeloma clinician, but I couldn't call it a myeloma. OK, so as we see, the, this mighty 88 mutations most commonly occur in Waldenstrom's or lymphoplasmacytic, but can occur in a small percentage of other um, lymphoma CLL, mold, even DLBCL, uh, the uh, primary uh, CNS lymphoma, um, and then also even these low grade extranodal uh, marginals on B cell lymphomas. So it's not really diagnostic, but then people now ask for therapy. So a therapeutic agent with these lesions with my 88. Um, does anybody know? Uh, ibutinib apparently is very effective in these lesions with my 88. So it's more like in refractory settings or you know, that they, they want to um, use this or even maybe a diagnosis. So here's another interesting case I got over my desk. So what is this? What do we see here? Grossly. What is this? It's a testicle. Testicle and very fish fleshy uh, cut section. So here you see the tubules. And then what is this? I think this is low grade or high grade process? It looks like high grade. Yeah, high grade lymphoma. So large B cell lymphoma in the testis. Um, I think it was all in you know, a post-germinal center. But here's another um, another lymphoma with the mighty AD, uh, just in this, as an example. So primary testicular lymphoma so has uh, mighty AD mutations and tend to have the MOM1 expression or activated B cell phenotype. So do you do these mutations at all? Do you have a basket of mutations that you check for when another lymphoma case comes up? So I think right now, yeah, we send out um, to, to foundation medicine. I think right then they're talking about bringing it in house, but they've been talking for a while. So there's, once that gets set, set up, then there's going to be a streamline or workflow like, to do it. And I think it's of interest at, at diagnoses, relapse refractory type cases, just to compare, you know, if they don't respond to conventional therapy, uh, then they'll consider these other more uh, targeted therapeutics, or if they want to put them in trials, so like you know, this like some Kettering where they have you know all these DLBCL trials with all these mutations. So those get those types of places 
or NCI, you know, they, they do mutations in every single case that comes through because it's more clinical trial driven. So next case, this is a blood smear, 58 year old female. So what do we see here? <laughs> yeah. Okay, what else? What are these guys? Yeah. Plasma cells, small lymphs, plasma cell. So this one, this lady had um, her flow showed the bright, uh, what is it? Who's on flow? You want to do it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I still have to learn about so. So, this is a 38 bright. So CD38 positive, right? Uh -huh. And then this is, uh, it's also going towards, so this is 138 positive as well. Uh-huh. Um, mm, CD56 is positive, is it? Yeah, positive. positive. Yes, positive. Yeah. okay. Then CD20 is not positive. Yeah. So it's C38, 138, 56. So it's plasma cell. Leukemia, yeah, in the blood, with, or leukemic phase, right? So then they did a marrow, and her marrow was packed. Uh, very hypercellular, like just packed. Mostly mature forms, yeah? Yes. Not much prominent nuclear line. So here's the 138, your sheets, and then lambda. And then you should use, uh, the joke at our place is there's um, eosinophilia with plasma cells, so we always have to show Dr. Barlow here eosinophil. Um, so she responded quite well to therapy. This is her, her follow-up biopsy that was negative. Um, and this is her genetic, so at, at, um, since Dr. Barlogi joined us last year, we, every Friday we go through this exercise. We have our myeloma tumor board. We go through 10 or 20 cases, fascinating stuff. And they do gene expression profiling. Uh, so this is a high risk, high risk finding. And then they have virtual karyotypes showing all these various abnormalities. Um, this is sent out to Foundation Medicine, so it's non-enriched, but this person has an IGH cyclin D1 rearrangement, so that shows um, association with mature plasma cell phenotype. Also NRAS, um, not a, and then all these other findings, they said yeah, they don't know the significance. Um, but we've been seeing a lot of the sort of TET2, so this sort of chip this clonal hematopoiesis of indeterminate potential or arch uh, in these older people, and then also confirmed the 1114 confirmed by karyotype and disappeared after treatment, um, and then fish also they do fish, uh, which is also done at Quest, but then they're planning on bringing it in house with Dr. Neifeld's lab. So this is a plasma cell leukemia. Here's another case, um, guy with uh, prostate and colon cancer, but had a marrow. And what do we see here? Actually, yeah, the blood. How old? Uh, mid middle age, okay. 50s or so. Sorry, I didn't. But his blood showed these. So what is what is this? What are these cells here in the blood? What do you think? Huh? That's one thing. Yeah, very basophilic cytoplasm, prominent nucleoli. There's a neutrophil. And then here's the marrow. Again, same. Here's the marrow section. But then, what do you guys think? So use the glass? No. Yeah. yeah. So very aggressive plasma cell, neoplasm, high mid, funny multinucleated cells. So some of these they can mimic um, osteoclasts. There's some plasma cells can they look can look really strange. 
they can even mimic um, uh, lobular breast, lobular mm -hmm. carcinoma, sarcoma, melanoma. Um, uh, but this one had you know, you know, sort of the plasmablastic morphology, very prominent uh, nuclei, and kappa restricted. Here again, um, kappa. Uh, his genetics, he had a deletion of P53, so the 17P. Additional 9, 11, 15 uh, abnormalities, and then 1Q21 uh, abnormality. This is bad. Um, and then his genetics, he had NRAS, P53 loss, normal karyotype, but by gene expression, high risk. And as we showed by fish, um, these abnormalities. And then again, these other um, findings of unknown significance. Um, and he responded well to therapy. Had a multiple, they have like a ton of agents. Um, and then he had then this inguinal mass relapse. So what does this show? Again. It's high grade. Mm -hmm. I said it looks high grade. Yeah. Very high grade, 138 kappa, very high mid, and very high mic. Usually in myeloma, you don't have this. Usually it's like five to ten percent mid. So very aggressive biology, but not relapsed. He had like colon and prostate, so they were sort of happy about that. Um, and then also lesions in the vertebra. So also kappa, kind of crushed, and then left transverse. 130 kappa. But this has showing more different, more, more mature. So each lesion of site is different. So they talk, that's why they like to actively biopsy. Um, so when they, when they so do these genetic studies and they say uh, high risk, is it meaning high risk for relapse in those patients? Or what does that mean in clinically when they say high risk? High risk, um, they have, so this is the key. By my PRS gene expression profile, 70 gene profile, and then they have these scores that they um, then determine the survival. So they this is Dr. Barlow's database. And so this is five years survival. Yeah. So just I think that the the gene expression score then determining clinical survival. Basically, he he uses that. It's more common in. Europe apparently more than in the States. Okay. Uh, so this is what they, they use. Um, so treated with multi-agent therapy, I don't know if there are tumumab, the monoclonal CD38 antibody was used, but patient is doing so okay so far. Um, here's another person, again, sorry, I don't have the age, but uh, again, showing this biopsy. <laughs> Very abnormal plasma cells, multi nucleated, again 138 kappa. Eosinophils responded fine. This is a follow up biopsy. And this one, the genetics karyotype had um, MIC abnormality and sort of four way translocation, 8, 6, 11. It's a very complex genetics. Um, so just showing examples of uh, these uh, cases of myeloma with positive genetics that um, we wanted some. Just this interesting had like a BRAF, this BRAF B600. This is the same one that seen no, no, no. in uh, hairy cell leukemia. I don't think they use this uh, anti-BRAF antibody, but we've been seeing some of it. <coughs> And then again, comp the four-way translocation involving MIC. And this one failed, uh, so there's no data here. And then fish. So this is just an example uh, patient. So myelo tends to be more bony, not so much lymph node, because the other differential, if you didn't know that it's just plasmablastic lymphoma. But these are all little bony lesions, and this is after daratumumab, so amazing responses. 
sort of like these, you know, the lung and melanoma stories with the monoclonal antibody, pap marrow, but they respond very nicely. Here's another lady, not much, um, not good, had this really impressive uh, neural bony lesion, and then here's the cytology. So any very anaplastic um, plasma cells. Um, this is in her CSF. But Just by looking at, at it, we can't tell that this is a plasma cell. But with her history, um, and then there were others, yeah, that, but then I think flow or I see on the cell block was, was positive. Okay, and this she has also very high risk, very complex genetics. Uh, and she passed away uh, despite uh, supportive, long supportive care. So NRAS and this addition 1P, a 414, that's also not good. So uh, yeah, and thanks to uh, Jane Holdsworth, she puts these together weekly, our molecular pathology colleagues. Uh, and we go over this, these findings. So it's a weekly exercise every Friday, 10 to 20 cases. Um, and then, like I said, some of these uh, plasma cells can mimic, what is this? It's like osteoclast Osteoclast. giant cell, megakaryocyte, but on biopsy, you can see they're 138 and lambda, real bizarre forms. Um, and another example, they can have, what are these intranuclear or uh, cytoplasmic cytoplasmic Yeah, what do you call it? Neomorules, mot cell, mot cell, Russell body. If they're extrinsic, I guess it's Russell bodies. Um, so, yeah, so other things to think about while you get these cases. What are their, you know, aggressive neoplasms with lymphoplasmocytic diffusion? So as I said, this is a case example of plasmoblastic lymphoma. So compared to that other case, these usually tend to have more lymph node involvement. They can have bony involvement. Uh, the typical, you know, they're HIV, EBER positive, very high mid, they have MIC abnormalities. So that's one thing to uh, consider. Um, here's another case um, with, uh, this is like a 40-year-old guy, uh, just a lumpy thing on his neck and then these cells have very prominent cherry red nucleoli. So again, they look like could be plasma blast or something, plasma cell. It was lambda, cap, lambda restricted over kappa. But the ALK1 showed this cytoplasmic granular staining. So that's one of those rare ALK positive um, plasma blastic lymphomas. And that's usually associated with the T217. So there's this whole area of, you know, the ALK reactivity with the um, um, uh, either anaplastic or pleomorphic cell morphology. So you have to consider um, this is your ALK positive ALCL that usually has the nuclear and cytoplasmic ALK. DLBCL can have anaplastic features. A transformed Richter CLL, you can have bizarre cell or HHV8 plasmoblastic lymphoma um, that usually has a punctate uh, HHV8 reactivity. So here's ALK with nuclear cytoplasmic and amphophilic cytoplasm, so different from the granular cytoplasmic reactivity. And these usually have the T25 versus T217. Here's an HHV8, uh, like a solid variant plasmoblastic lymphoma. So this is LANA, right, HHV8 with the nuclear, uh, nucleolar punctate nuclear reactivity. And then a Burkitt lymphoma, also with high mid. Um, but like plasmoblastic lymphomas also can have very high mid, so very aggressive. And here's one, uh, again, in the mesentery, starry sky, sort of small non-cleave cell morphology. This case was 10 positive, BCL6 positive, MIC greater than 40, P53 positive, 
high, mid, and BCL2 greater than 70%. So what phenotype is this? ABC, GC? GC. The few large cell B cell, yeah, with GC. So that trumps for the hot hands algorithm. Um, but then by genetics, it had a triple hit. So abnormalities in BCL2, BCL6, and CMIC. So you have now the double hit, triple hit lymphoma, and those are, uh, they behave very badly. Okay, so, so any questions? I'm going to switch gears a bit. So, far. so here's another um, adding to the spectrum. What do we what do we see here? It's a bone marrow, a middle middle aged guy, person. What do you think this is? I see some thickening or amyloid looking deposits. In the yeah. Which is, I guess, red, red positive. And in other areas, again, 130 kappa, lambda negative. And this guy had, again, very high risk uh, gene expression abnormalities, very complex karyotype, these ATM, CDKN2A, genomic alterations, high abnormality fish. Um, so this guy was put on uh, some experimental trial, BCMA trial uh, for myeloma and amyloid. Uh, here's another lady. What do we see here? This is the plasmosome. Yeah, one, two. A different case, um, but not so high level, about 10%. Yeah. Not, not sheets. Maybe kappa more than lambda more mature asthma cells. Oh yeah, and then she had this lymph node. What, and what do you see here? Lymph node biopsy on that same lady. More sheets of plasma cells. So this is like a lymph node core with all this pink stuff. Congo red positive. And then this is sent to Mayo, so for the, uh, they do this amyloid sub subtyping, uh, the chromatography, mass spectrometry. So it showed an interesting um, delta heavy chain kappa light chain disease. That was very interesting. And another case, so like we talked about, this is in a, an appendix of a guy um, so here's the appendix, and then all this eosinophilic stuff. But then we so what do you think these are? It's like megakaryocytes or something weird. All these bizarre. So this is in the sinus of the adjacent lymph node, and all this eosinophilic stuff, and then some plasma cells. So we thought, yeah, if it may be multinucleated giant cells could be reacting and gobbling up the amyloid. Um, but here's the 138, or megakaryocyte with factor eight. But these are negative for factor eight, but yet positive by 138. So I don't know what, why, but it's so bizarre. Mimicking megakaryocytes and lambda restricted. So amyloid and some sort of lymphoplasmacytic low-grade lymphoma in the appendix, unusual. And then another recent case, bone. Look at these, this bizarro, humongous giant cell reaction to the amyloid and immature plasma cells. So this is another plasma cell neoplasm and amyloid in bone. And here's the, the Congo red positive, and Kappa and 138. Any questions? Okay, so switching gears totally now. <laughs> it's a different, different type of. Um, 
guy with marrow, and he had some genetic abnormalities, TP53, deletion 14, 1722, and CD20 in his marrow, sort of sparse, patchy. Some sort of low-grade B cell neoplasm. And then this is his blood. What do you think of this? So there's blasts. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looks like a pretty immature cell, etc. Yeah, with the clear line. I think this is plasma cells. Lymphocyte. Uh huh. Just a pro lymphocyte. Pro lymphocyte. Yeah, that's another thing. Pro B. Pro. Uh, I mean, yes. Yeah, so could some of them have projections? Maybe. So, so then we got the spleen in an infarct. So he came in with a, so a huge spleen, 2200 gram spleen, it's infarcts. Um, and then the spleen showed this. So what do we think? Pretty much effaced. Not much white pulp, maybe involving just red and white, but the, the whole thing was just effaced with this sort of blue cell infiltrate. And mainly 20, somewhat low mid, 43 positive, 25 negative, and then BRAF negative. Why am I saying that? I don't know, any thoughts? Splenic marginal, what else? Some sort of low grade B cell. So, yeah, this turned out to be an hairy cell variant. So these are usually. Yeah, BRAF negative, that's typical. And with P53 abnormalities, so there's a, I can give a reference for that. Um, and then the nucleoli, prominent nucleoli in the blood, that's very typical apparently. And many had these sort of projections, but they look, yeah, kind of, you know, you wonder if yes, yeah, splenic, marginal, villus, lymphocytes. Um, so there is this table yet yeah, of these low-grade B cell lymphomas in the spleen. So prolymphocytic, that's a good thought, splenic marginal zone. Hairy cell, we talked about, hairy cell variant. So here's the phenotype. So usually, hairy cell is bright, 103. This is sort of partial positive. And then the, I don't know, this diffuse splenic red pulp lymphoma. That's also another one uh, to consider. But the P53 genetic abnormalities, the nucleoli, um, we thought would it best fit with hairy cell variant. But these are all thoughts to consider. Okay. What do we have? Okay, and then last few cases. This just came up through my desk the last week or so. What do we think of this? So again, 50-year-old guy. Hypercellular. Tons of megas. Plasma cells on the smear, plasma cells in the biopsy, a lot of histiocytes, so almost granular, but then we saw stuff like this. He does have a significant history, but I'm not <laughs> at this point, I'll let you guys guess. Any other thoughts? What do you think? Could these again be mature plasma cells? Possibly, yeah. Any thoughts? Areas had eosinophils. Diagrams. Diagrams. Sure, that's a good thought. I don't know, Langerhans. Unusual to have these big. Usually, Langerhans, what do they have? Huh? 
They have the more. Huh? Laura, say that again. Sorry, hot Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Excellent. So here's the 30. Here is the 15, very weak, creepy history 6. Here's the Pax 5. Weak, but then strong, adjacent. And here's the Eber. So nice, yeah, case of Hodgkin's in the marrow, but he had apparently all this other lymph nodes and around the periporal area of Hodgkin. Histology, I guess the other thing of histology is that if you saw a lot of eosinophils yeah. on the one side, that's something you see in Hodgkin's. Yeah, so usually you see in, Hodge, in the marrow, it's architectural uh, abnormalities, fibrosis, a lot of like granulomas or histiocytes, mm -hmm. the eels, the plasma cells. But then these sort of, sort of scattered, single, um, atypical, like Reedsterber like variants. So that's one thing to consider. But yeah, if you just got this cold, it would be. Um, I guess the other thought is a you know, B cell lymphoma, like that T cell histiocyte rich. But the 20 was negative. PAX is usually much more strong. And then the Eber maybe could have been negative. But this person had. Get extensive disease. So this was like a staging marrow. Um, and kept and then the plasma cells are polyclonal, not not clonal. Um, and this yet yeah, is another case, uh, just within the last week. Sort of similar. So bone marrow, architecture effacement, a lot of histiocytes, like some even like multinucleated giant cells, eosinophilia, uh, all these small lymphs. But then you have these sort of atypical, so again, is this another case of Hodgkin? Is this some weird B cell thing, lymphoma? So this case was CD20 positive. Uh, CD20 again positive. Tons of small T cells. And then a retic was sort of positive. So this, this was a lady, derm brought by skin. So she had all this, like, Eczematous stuff. So the skin showed the same sort of lymphocyte or histiocytic rich T cell lymphoma, and they did gene rearrangement, it was positive for IGH heavy chain gene rearrangement. So this one is a, in contrast to Hodgkin T cell rich B cell in the, in the marrow. So there's another thing to think about when it comes across. So in summary, I just went over the spectrum of lymphoplasmacytic cell neoplasms, uh, differential diagnoses to think about and consider, and then some cases of molecular integration. Um, so a couple of questions. Some boards and rise are coming. How do we detect mast cells? Yeah, what else? 117. Good. Yeah. H &E. H &E. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so all apparently, yeah, all of these. Well. eating blue ginza, yeah. So all of, so all of these, you can um, detect mast cells. Uh, how do we subtype amyloid? Is it um, mass spec? Mass spec. So, yeah, I think so. Mass spec. And then mighty 88 mutations are most commonly found in. Yeah, good. But they can be found at lower levels in these other things, right? We talked about. So, good. What else? Viruses in plasmablastic lymphoma. Just oh. Perfect. Okay, great. Yep. Good. And pathways involved in plasmablastic lymphoma. Good. Versus the stat, so there, I can give a reference for this. So there is the yeah stat in this out positive plasmablastic versus MIC in the EBV positive plasmablastic lymphoma. 
And what marker does not define GC versus non-GC or ABC phenotype? BCL2. Okay. okay. Then, um, yeah. Yeah. Mick? Mick. Yeah, and I get, yeah, BCL2. Also correct. Good. All right. And then what gene does not define double hit or triple hit high grade lymphoma? Yeah, good. And then mutations in Burkitt lymphoma. This is in that blood uh, WHO update. I think there's this guy. This one. All right. Thank you. That's all I have for today. Thank you for Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any questions? You guys have any questions? What about the other sites? You guys have questions? Okay. Great. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry. Here's a uh, case of repeat three and the the homophobia with the prominent appeals. Is that enough to call it or do we need like one of three, one two three, three? Or just fifty three percent is strong enough? Yeah, I think the P53, um, I think we did, we attempted 123, that was negative. It was negative. 123 was negative. Um, so I think, I think that's enough, but like I said, yeah, I think that, that was, that's okay. This paper by Elias Campbell, and I'll, I'll spread this reference around. This is, was helpful.